Okay, everyone, we are live. <laughs> Welcome to Simplify Your 2019. My name is Jennifer Wilson, and I am your guide here at Simple Scrapper. I am so excited for today's presentation, and I hope you are ready for some good stuff tonight. A couple things I want you to know. Um, in a second here, I'll be switching over to presentation. Um, I've got lots of really good slides with examples for you guys tonight. And towards the end, I'll have a little bit of demonstration of, where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Of uh, this thing. So beautiful. This is the final proof of our new workbook. And I'll be sharing all about that later on. Um, if you have not seen the chat box yet, I know you guys are all on different computers and tablets and phones. If you can find the chat box, that's where the action is going to happen. But I am going to ask you to please reserve your any questions for me till the end because I'm not going to be able to see the chat during my presentation. It's going to be all full screen for me. And so if you can hold those questions for the end, but I also see so many familiar faces here in the chat box. If you just have a general question about Simple Scrapper or things we do, I guarantee you there's going to be folks there that can answer it for you. So again, welcome to everyone. If you are new to our community, I am so grateful you are giving us a chance to find out what it is we do here at Simple Scrapper. Um, this is a place where simple has a lot of different meanings. Simple is not just a style or an aesthetic or uh, the way your scrapbooking looks. Simple is something much deeper than that. It's how we approach scrapbooking and how we actually bring simplicity in our lives to make our hobbies more fun and to have, feel like we have time and energy and space to really get a lot out of scrapbooking. And so simple is this really expansive term, but it's really about what is simple for you. Because what's simple for you and for me, it's going to be a lot different. We all have different values and needs and priorities, preferences, formats we love, things that work well, what gives me creative flow and an energizing, you know, goodness is going to be a lot different. And so we help you figure out what works best for you. And I'm going to be sharing a lot more about that when we jump into the presentation. So again, welcome everyone. If you would pop into that chat box, hopefully you found it by now and tell me where you are coming from. I would love to see where you guys all live. I know we have folks from, or at least we tend to have folks from all over the world. So pop in that chat box for me. All right. I know we have, also we have, oh, we have, wow. I'm, I'm, some of the people that I follow online here, we have Victoria Marie in the Dallas area. We have Bree in Washington, D.C., Caroline in Australia. I saw Jen Chapin earlier. I know she lives in Iowa. You guys, she has an awesome YouTube channel all about healthy family meal prep and a million followers there. So you need to check her out. We have, let's see, Tina from New Hampshire, uh, Jackie from Texas, Judy from New Mexico, Dion in Canada. Amy in Austin, Alyssa's on vacation in Florida here, she lives here in Illinois, Annie from Utah, Gail from Michigan, wow, we, this is amazing tonight, guys, oh, Patty from Grand Rapids, Brian from South Australia, Autumn from French Polynesia, also on vacation, that sounds like a really delightful vacation location, awesome, Nicole in Houston, Chris in Illinois. Wow. Okay. Thank you guys so much for all of you watching as well as all of you who are watching in the replay. We do record all of these live broadcasts we do so that you can watch them at your convenience because I know that not everyone can show up live, but I am so grateful for all of you who are here live with me tonight. And I think this one is going to be really, really fun. I've done presentations like this over the years. Um, and I was just checking, I thought I'd kind of given this presentation every year, but the last time I have one that was called simplify your whatever year it was, was actually 2013. So that means it was six years ago, but I think I've done some things that are similar since then, but I certainly, I love this presentation and I love, I love the new year energy 
but I also love putting our simple scrapper, our practical spin on that. I, I love so that we can take this approach and not feel like we have to shoot for the moon and set goals that are unrealistic and then get frustrated or burnt out, that we can really tune in to what's going to feel really good and what's going to keep us going throughout the year. So come, you know, 10, 11 months from now, we feel just as energized about those goals as we do uh, right in this moment in this all of this New Year's energy buzz. All right, let's switch over to the presentation here and we will dive right in. So hopefully everything will work well. It's gonna be full screen. Um, I think I have a backup here who's gonna text me in case something uh, breaks down. But Alyssa, you're number two. If something breaks down, I need to text to find out if the, uh, the audio doesn't work. I know a lot of you guys have my phone number. All right. There we go. Second, I'll do it backwards. Source, share screen, and then this should be good now. And we don't, I don't think we want this little. Got a picture in picture. All right, hopefully that's good now. Okay, so simplify your 2019. This presentation is really rooted in the fact that I want to give you some guiding principles, some really, really simple strategies that you can jump back to uh, whenever you're feeling like life is getting cluttered again, when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're not feeling in touch with your hobby or even you know what's going on in your life that if you go back to these three simple principles you'll be able to find make course corrections you'll be able to find new strategies you'll be able to figure out maybe where you're going wrong where you're getting stuck and to make things a little bit easier so they're really simple ideas hopefully they'll be really easy to remember and I think they're going to be useful in an iterative way so that if you revisit these three ideas throughout the year and in future years, you're always going to find something new, a new way to apply these. It's not just a one time you need to check these boxes. These are strategies that you can use again and again. So I want to kick things off by having you think about last year to think about your albums, your pages, your projects, the types of formats that you use, whether you did pocket pages, digital layouts, photo books, 12 by 12, 6 by 8, traveler's notebooks, whatever you did last year. Let's just start thinking about how that went. Do you have a positive feeling, a negative feeling? How satisfied are you? So we're going to do this reflection. So are you satisfied with your progress from last year? Do you feel really good about it? Did you feel it? Do you feel like you did enough? And was that benchmark realistic for you? And then do you feel like you have clear creative plans for 2019? Oops, I'm getting a text. Something maybe isn't working. All right, hold on a second, guys. All right, is it, um, what are you guys seeing? Because someone said they're all just seeing, I just got a text saying she's just seeing a blue box in the background, so maybe I'm not in the right place. Um, I don't see anything in the chat. Were you guys seeing my slides in the chat? Can you check in with me? I just want to make sure that we're good before I get too far into this. <laughs> A 
Okay, I think I fixed it now. All right. Thank you for the text message. I think this should work it. Um, All right. <laughs> All right. So this is the first slide. You guys heard me kind of introduce the session. And then we started thinking about how we felt about last year. And I, I won't go back through that because you guys got the gist of it. I really just want you to think about where you are right now to really come into the present moment and think about your particular hobby and where what's feeling good and maybe what's feeling with a, a little bit less ease and then to really think about moving forward do you have those do you feel like you have clarity do you feel like you know what it is you want to accomplish this year the types of things that you want to do what's a priority to you what's not and then also what's getting in the way i hear a lot that photos and supplies are a source of frustration and that they keep getting in the way of you getting to that point of creating. And so I want you to just kind of mumble in your head about this and think about where you are because the rest of this presentation is going to be about giving you some solutions for teasing that all apart and giving, getting you to a new place of clarity. All right. So sorry about that technical. We should be good now. All right, so again, this is me. I'm Jennifer Wilson. I'm your guide here at Simple Scrapper. Many of you guys know I'm actually a water scientist by training. I still do that part-time, work for the University of Illinois. Uh, but I've been 10 years in business here with Simple Scrapper, and I absolutely love what I do, and I feel so privileged to be able to spend this time with you guys and to share something a little bit different that I don't see um, shared within our industry. I don't feel like a lot of people are talking about the same types of things that we do here. We're a very unique, special community because I'm obsessed with doing things your way. I'm not obsessed with whatever my way is. I share, yes, a lot of my projects, but I'm much more interested in helping you figure out what is going to be your way, what's going to work best for you and give you the satisfaction that you need so that your money is well spent, your time is peaceful and energized and well spent, and you just, you're happy with your hobby and it's an important, fulfilling part of your life. And of course, that those memories are getting documented, that they're, they are those treasures that you are providing for your family, that you're moving forward in a way that really makes sense. It's not about perfection. It's not about uh, quantity. It's about really the quality of what you're putting in and knowing that you're doing the best you can in this moment. It's, it's all about being practical. All right. And of course we have our new hashtag here, scrapbook your way. And I really consider this a new movement. We've been doing this for a long time here at simple scrapper. And I finally felt like I could, I had a phrase, some words that I could put around this is that I want you to scrapbook your way. And I hope you will use this hashtag on Instagram, whenever you're sharing um, a light bulb moment, a new project that you've finished, a way that you've tweaked things to make it easier. I want to hear about your successes and know how you are personalizing this hobby and listening more to your own voice than you are to what the industry and the manufacturers are saying that you need to do. Because that's what's important to me is that you are taking in all this information and then making really smart decisions so that your supplies aren't piling up so that it's so overwhelming so that you feel constantly energized and motivated so it's easy to jump in you don't feel these barriers or hesitations and that you're of course making progress you're completing pages and you're completing projects so what does scrapbook in your way look like so scrapbook your way looks like for example, scrapbooking only at crops and knowing that's good enough. So that may resonate with you and it might not. Last year was one of my most productive years and that was for a couple of reasons. One of which was the six by eight size that I chose. But another one was because of our simple scrapper community crops that I did a, most of my scrapbooking for last year at those crops. But it was the consistency throughout the year 
that made it so productive. Scrapbook Your Way also looks like telling a brand new fresh story even though you're not caught up with past years. And I know some of you are already doing this, but some of you might feel that hesitation that you can't scrapbook the new pictures yet because you haven't caught up with the past. And I'm here to give you permission to tell you it's okay to follow your motivations, your intuition, to follow what's energizing you right now and knowing that that momentum from telling that new story is what's going to give you the energy to go catch up on past years. And Scrapbook Your Way also looks like creating even when you don't feel organized. And this goes back to those barriers we were talking about, that photo organization and supply organization can create these walls that make us feel like, well, I can't scrap until, I can't create until, and there's also the stuff in our life. I can't scrapbook until the laundry's done or the dishes are done or all of these things, all these barriers we put in our way, but they actually aren't limitations. Even if your, your quote unquote creative space is a total mess, you could pick 10 items and take them to another room and scrapbook there. There's always a way to make you, to help, uh, there's always a way that you can move forward even when it, you don't feel organized and you don't feel like it's possible. And so I want you to kind of open your mind and know that you can do these things. And that's really at the heart of what Scrapbook Your Way is all about, is knowing that you can find the solutions even when there are barriers and challenges. All right, and one of the reasons I am so excited about this movement is because part of what we're doing is a brand new podcast. I have been podcasting for three years and we did it exclusively for our members. So I feel like I've got the hang of it now. We did 76 episodes and those have now been archived and we're going to do a brand new podcast called Scrapbook Your Way. It's going to be a free weekly show. Um, it'll have a mix of formats, some just me, some interviews, roundtable discussions, Q&A. It's going to be so, so awesome. I'm so excited about it and it launches in early February. And of course, we're going to launch with a slug of episodes, and then we'll start weekly right after that. So you can go to simplescrapper.com slash podcast in case you want to sign up to be notified when that launches. Now, if you are a member and you were already subscribed to the old podcast, you will automatically be subscribed to the new one because we're using the same feed. All right, so let's dive into today's lessons. So what are these three strategies for a simple creative year? What can you do to really find more ease and more joy in your hobby and to do that year after year? So the first one is to identify your sweet spot. And this is more specific than just to scrapbook your way. It's, it's, it's a little bit more deep than that. And so that's what that looks like is identifying the supplies you love to play with. Now the example here in the inset was a layout I made a number of years ago with all kind of neutral, subtle pattern papers with texture. I had some gold there, I had my doily, there was a pink ribbon, the wood grain. And this was really leaning into what I identified as the products that I love to play with most. And because of that, that page came together easily because I had fun playing with the supplies. But your sweet spot can also look like uh, understanding when and where you have the most creative energy. Do you create best from your laptop in a coffee shop in a specific room of your house? Is it in the early morning? Is it in the evening? Is it on the weekends? Do you have to be totally alone or do you like background noise? Do you love the energy of a crop and having lots of other people around or do you like to be alone? So understanding kind of what makes you feel creative and what makes you feel motivated to create will help you do more of that so that you can really lean into the sweet spot. And then also another example here is determining the formats that feel easy and fun. This is different than supplies. This is whether or not you're doing digital or paper or the Project Life app or pocket pages and the size of pages or you're doing single layouts or whole albums at once. How do you want to tell your stories? How are those structured together? And 
which of those feel easy and fun? Because they can sound fun, they can look fun when you're looking at things online, but they may not actually be easy for you when you sit down to do them. And sure, there's ways to practice and get better, but there's always gonna be things that you naturally gravitate towards that where you can easily find flow and that's what I always recommend doing more of, finding your sweet spot and doing more of that so you're not beating your head against a wall and feeling frustrated that you don't find it easy to create the way you see other people online creating. All right, so I have some case studies here in this presentation, and these are all from things that I've done personally. So this case study is of my December daily projects. So I had had trouble with completing six by eight December daily albums in the past. And you don't see any of those here because they're not complete. That's why I don't have photos of them. But they were all pocket page focused. And I had had trouble that, with that size and doing all pockets because I found it a little frustrating. I found it boring. It just, it wasn't, it didn't fill me up as much as other types of scrapbooking. And I actually had the most success in the past with these three mini albums that you see that were squares, that were more layout focused. And I would actually say the least success I had was the pocket page we see in, in the back there, which was a Project Life mini album where I had no journaling. I did filler cards and photos, and I would say that was the, probably the least satisfying year I did overall. And so the more I thought about this, I was thinking about what worked, what didn't, where I made progress and where I didn't, and I discovered that I need to do layouts. I enjoy the process of taking a blank page and figuring out how all the pieces are gonna fit. It's not that I don't ever like to do pockets, but I don't wanna do that all the time. So I chose an approach of doing mostly six by eight layouts for this year's December Daily, and I've made great progress. And it, that knowledge is carrying over into this year, and I'm gonna continue doing that. So it's when you observe your past, you can take things and move forward and test things and then figure out what you want to keep doing and what maybe you don't want to do as much of or do it all in the future. All right, number two, stay motivated with balance. Now, this is a little bit loaded because we all know that balance is kind of elusive and it really doesn't exist. It's more about feeling in balance. But I have a particular slant on this that I want to share. And that's what I really want you to think about what is fun and playful for you in scrapbooking and what is important and more legacy oriented and more of that deeper meaning. We all have a unique mix of why we scrapbook and what our motivations are in the moment. So it's important to check in with those motivations and see what's really driving you right now and to do projects and pages and activities that are in line with that. So what that looks like is giving yourself permission to play sometimes, even if that means you don't have a finished product in the end. Um, doing just for fun projects like this, I did a pocket page, which here's an example of a pocket page that did work for me. I took screenshots from the internet of shows I like to watch and I did a nine by 12 pocket page in my album. It was fun, it was kind of frivolous, it came together very beautifully because, of course, there's these professional images, and I'm happy with it. But it wasn't deeply meaningful. It was just one little fun thing I added to my album that year. So as I said, if you check in with your current motivations and kind of look to both sides of that, you'll be able to figure out what type of project to choose next. So if you're ever having trouble with priorities or what's, what, what should I do next, really think about this question here. All right, here's another case study. So when I made this particular layout, I was in a place where I had completed, I don't know, 20 to 30 layouts for a class. That I, uh, this happened to be a class that I was teaching, but I can see the same scenario working if you're ta you've taken a class and you've just followed a lot of instructions. You might be feeling burnt out. You've learned a lot of things. You've put a lot of energy into it. It doesn't mean you don't wanna stop scrapbooking, but you're just feeling a little bit blah about it. And so in this case, I realized that painting for me feels freeing. It feels energizing. It's how I kind of reconnect with that visceral act of creating. You know, it gives me a little bit of childhood energy. 
And so I started making pages where I was painting on the background. Sometimes it was just a swoosh like this one. I did several layouts in this time period that helped me get more excited again about scrapbooking after feeling burnt out. I felt like I was in a rut doing the same types of things again and again. And this helped me not only feel more excited again, but gave me some different possibilities that I don't always have to create pages using the same process. They don't have to always be story focused or photo focused. Sometimes they can really be art and creativity focused as, as my true starting point. All right, number three here, let go more often. Now, this is really good advice probably in general for all of us. I can see that. Um, but I have some specific things here that I want to share. So, and of course, these are all going to connect a little bit with the things we've been discussing. And letting go looks like calling an unfinished project done. Saying, you know what, I did this, I enjoyed it, and it's okay, it's going to be done. And sometimes that looks like keeping that project, and sometimes it actually looks like throwing it away and saying, you know what, this isn't important to me anymore, I don't need to keep this. So a really true letting go there. Letting go also looks like finding organization systems for photos, for supplies, for albums that work better for you. And what I really mean here is not necessarily following rules or someone else says to me, well, this is how you should do it, or this is the degree of organization you should have. And because none of that is true. It's all about, can you get to the photo you need when you want to scrapbook? If you can do that, then your organization system is good enough. It is what works for you. And the only degree you need to tweak it is so that you can get to that point of being able to find a photo easily to scrapbook. And the same for your supplies. You don't need to have multiple layers of small labeled containers. You don't need to have fully tagged digital library. You just need to be able to find the supply you need when you need it. And that's all going to depend on how you scrapbook and how you approach things. So you have to think about what is working for you and doing that, but it's only that degree of organization that gets you to the end result. It's not the point is not to be organized. The point's to be able to scrapbook. And that's what I want you to remember here. And a lot of that requires that letting go of these expectations. All right, another example here is to try new or simpler formats to feel more caught up. And that's the example here in the photo is that I do these annual photo books of my daughter because I'm not, I don't have the time or the energy to do a whole separate book for her that either for our family or even to share with others that has lots of journaling and details and is really truly scrapbooked. So I take all of my Instagram photos plus a few others and I put them in a photo book and I print multiple copies and I send them to family members. They're happy that they get photos of Emily. I'm happy that they're happy and I feel that kind of relief, but it's a simpler choice that I got to make, that I could feel more caught up in the things that I wanted to do that felt important to me without having to do something that I considered quote unquote traditional scrapbooking. So there's always these opportunities to do something a little bit differently. Sometimes that looks like a collage of photos from your vacation rather than an entire album. It's about kind of opening your mind to doing things a little bit different so that you can find that ease and you can find that fun to then get on to the next fun, cool thing. Because the last thing I want is for you to feel bogged down and having to do something in a routine, monotonous way and that you're always feeling like, it's like a, an uphill battle, that you'll never be able to finish because you have to keep doing it the same way. Because you don't at all. You can let go and you can try something new or simpler. All right, and then we have our last case study here. So this is a project, and of course this is always embarrassing to share, that I started a one little word album project a few years ago. Uh, my word that year was space, but I only made a few pages, like five or six. And this was part of my introduction to maybe pocket page albums don't really work for me that when they're all pocket pages. And more than a few years have passed since I chose that word. And I think that was probably also around 2013. And so this past year, I decided, well, this is done. I took all the pages that I had 
and I put them in my annual album for that year. And that was okay. I didn't have to do all the prompts. I didn't have to feel like there was more to do. I could just say, well, this is what I did. I did the series of pages about my word and that's it. It's done. And that's good enough. And this type of permission is so, so important because we carry that weight with us of these unfinished projects and it prevents us from moving forward, from moving forward with new projects, with new stories, um, taking classes that sound fun and exciting because you can't say, well, that's finished. It's okay to just say, yep, it's done. It is what it is because that's the way life is too. There's so much imperfection in our own paths that we have to be able to say that's, that's the beauty of life is all of that imperfection. And you can do the same with your scrapbooking. All right, so I hope, I know that was a lot. I hope that was so helpful. We've got lots more to share here. That is, those are the three, um, the three solutions and strategies for you. All right, so now I wanna dive in to the Scrapbook Your Way workbook because this is a tool that I created in order to help you implement those strategies in a, a natural guided way. And so many of you have already downloaded the workbook, but the point is to help you figure out what works best for you and to create simple plans to do more of that. It's really, it's really basic, but yet powerful in that simplicity that you ask yourself these questions so that you can actually make plans that align with your own personality, your own choices, your own, you know, obligations and responsibilities as well. And so the digital download of the Scrapbook Your Way workbook is completely free. As I said, I know many of you guys have already downloaded it. Thank you so much. Um, I've been so excited about the response to this. And then we also have a printed version. And the reason I did a printed version is just for, um, for your convenience to be able to have a, a compact, easy to access version that's you know feels special shipped directly to your home um, we are able to offer free us shipping and this is an exclusive just for those of you watching this presentation is that um, i was able to order some additional copies for any of those who still want them for this first shipment um, i'm not able to ship them kind of on a rolling basis just because of, of so many other obligations but if you do order um by this Friday, I'll be able to ship it to you next week. So if you are interested in that, that is an opportunity for those of you watching. And I think here, yeah, this is where we will switch the slides and we will do a little bit of a demo here. All right, so I'm gonna go to camera real quick, okay. So there's me again. Hopefully you're actually seeing me. We'll switch to the table in a second, but I just want to talk very briefly about just the format of, of the workbook. I also have, I have my printed copy here. So we have the digital download you'll get is just a standard US letter size, eight and a half by 11, very easy to print out. I didn't want to have to force you to figure out how to do booklet printing at home if you really want a booklet, just order the printed copy. Um, we have a nice full color cover and then the inside is all black and white for your convenience and your ink saving. The printed version is half size. It's five and a half by eight and a half. And it is printed on uh, thicker paper in the inside. It's not truly bleed proof, so don't use a Sharpie, but regular pens and you know, even ink pens for journaling will work just fine. Um, very, very nice, rich feeling paper though. And then the cover is also super durable. Um, our, this is the copy I just got today. I'm so excited. This is our final proof. We actually have the cover UV coated now for extra durability because this is intended to be used over the course of a year. So you're gonna have it tucked around your scrapbook space, maybe in your purse. And it's gonna get a little banged up, but I want it to still stick together and be really solid for you throughout the year. We made a few small changes. 
Um, those of you who came to my presentation in December, I walked through the first two sections of the book. And those two sections are the creative download and the yearly review. So these are the sections that you can start as soon as you get your workbook. And I want to encourage you to go back to that presentation. It's also on our YouTube channel. Um, and after this, I will link it down below. And I walk through each question in those two sections and, and tell you a little bit more about the motivations I had in asking the question, as well as I shared my answers to the question. Um, but we did make a few changes in this final version. I'm, I'm so excited about it. We have um, a little bit smaller font. We have now you can add a date, um, both your name and the start date here on a cover page. Just I'm so excited about this version. It's so pretty and just like that compact portable size. But what I wanted to do tonight is I'm going to switch the camera to my desk. And that was over here now. So, and I just want to share a little bit about the seasonal planning portion. So again, we've got the cover page, our table of contents. And of course the camera doesn't love to focus on white very much. But we're going to dive into the seasonal roadmap section. So last year I created these seasonal roadmap documents that helped you set priorities season after season and invite you to some of the things we are doing at Simple Scrapper. And I incorporated that whole concept into this workbook. And so what that includes is there's four sections for so four quarters in the book. And the first question is, what is your number one personal priority for this quarter? So what's, what's important to you right now? What, what is it that you are really focusing on? And I'm talking about your entire life. What is at the top of the list for you? Because knowing that allows you to figure out where scrapbooking fits into that. And sometimes that might be scrapbooking. A lot of the times it's probably not going to be. But it's going to give you, is your personal priority self-care and downtime? Then scrapbooking is going to fit into that. Is it something completely different? Is it a house renovation or a move? Well, then maybe scrapbooking isn't going to be as important, but it's important to set that stage for what you're focusing on so that you can then plan things accordingly. And that's the solution for not feeling overwhelmed and feeling like you always bite off more than you can chew. All right. What's been working well in your scrapbooking and what might you need to let go of in scrapbooking? These are kind of our key questions we ask again and again. And these are things that I even ask myself, you know, you can insert any word for scrapbooking there. What's going well in my health and what's, what might I need to let, let, what might I need to let go of? So any area of your life, these questions are so, so powerful. And that's why I always encourage you to do those as part of this um, seasonal roadmap. And then of course, what are your priorities? What are the top three things that you want to get done? If you could only do three things, what would those be? It doesn't mean you won't do anything else, but if you could do just three things, you're going to feel so much more accomplished and to know that you can check those off. It's just a way of getting you to focus because I know we all get so excited about new supplies and new classes and new things we want to try, new techniques. We want to watch all the videos and, and, and go to all the webinars and read all the blog posts. And there's just not enough time for it at all. And so maybe your priorities are finishing a project and learning how to take better photos and getting your paper organized. So whatever those priorities are, you can put them here so that you can keep going back to that. So whenever you feel a little out of focus, a little unguided, you jump back here and know what your priorities are. And then of course, what would you like to participate in a simple scrapper this quarter? Because of course we hope that as part of your priorities, you want to hang out with us at simple scrapper, whether it's at free events like this one or inside of our, my simple scrapper membership community. How do you want to get more involved and go a little bit deeper with fellow scrapbookers? Because community is really where you can learn, you can, you know, find millions more of these case studies. It's one of the things we talk about most inside our community is how did you solve this particular problem? Or someone will come to us with a problem, we'll provide solutions 
And then my favorite part is when they come back and share, well, I did that and it worked and it was awesome and thank you. Um, that's what really fills me up and I'm, why I'm so glad that our community is so powerful and this, this group that we have is so generous with their advice and support for fellow members. All right, and then of course it repeats. So then we have the next quarter. And as you may have noticed, this is completely undated. This just says quarter here. So it doesn't matter what side of the world you live on or when your quarters start in your mind, you can write that inside of this book. And that was super important to me to make it flexible for no matter what seasons you have or whether you go with more of the natural seasons, the calendar seasons, fiscal years, whatever, whatever your brain does, I wanted this to really, really work for you. And I'm super, super proud of it. <laughs> Carrie just said, I want to do all the things. Yes, I understand that. Me too, all the time. So we'll jump back in. I just have a couple more slides here. So hopefully I can do it right this time. Share screen. Sharing PowerPoint. All right. All right, so again, the digital download, completely free. It'll be emailed to you. Or if you do want a copy printed and shipped to you, it's $18. And if you do by this Friday, it will ship next week. All right, one more thing that I want to talk about before we get to questions, and that is our refresh retreat. This is something that we do once a quarter, and it's probably, I always say everything's my favorite thing, but really this is one of my favorite things that we do because it's so special. So what this is, it's a seven day online retreat for our members. Um, each retreat has its own theme. The theme for the one starting January 17th is just start. So we'll be sharing some strategies for starting from kind of different perspectives. We'll also be having some really great discussions. Um, these retreats include conversation prompts as well as specific creative and directed activities. Not all of them are creative. Most of them are. Sometimes I'm just telling you to do something. Um, but this different every single time. Sometimes we'll do permutations of things, but every retreat is a little bit different, has a different theme, a different focus, because I want you to know that every season you have this opportunity to start fresh. And, and of course, doing it in community provides that much more motivation. We've got two scheduled live crops during the retreat, plus two scheduled chats. And then our members, because they are so active, they often schedule their own additional live crops. So basically we're all on Zoom, chatting away, scrapbooking. Um, two of those I host and schedule. And then of course there are always more because our members love to hang out with each other. And I am a hundred and a million percent supportive of that and I love that that happens. So that means we can usually accommodate anyone's schedule all around the world whenever you want to crop there's often something coming up soon. So I just wanted to share that as well because that is starting very very soon and we're really excited about this session um, inside of our community. And now I will switch back to my face and take your questions. Thank you. Sorry again about the technical hiccups at the beginning. I appreciate that I have so many um, friends and loyal followers here who can notify me when things don't go perfectly, but that is the name of life it is, and we will switch back here. Okay. We do not want the desk, we want me. Okay. So Jackie said, I drink the coffee, then I do the things. Yes. Coffee is important for sure. All right, so what questions do you guys have for me about any of this? Whether it is the three strategies, do you need more case studies, more examples? What did you mean by questions about the workbook or questions about our membership or even questions about the podcast? Though I can't share too much yet. Um, I just know that it's going to be totally awesome. I'm uh, checking back over your comments here. All right. 
Rebecca says, Lord knows I need to be refreshed. Well, I think we all need that. That's, that's what happens in life is that we start to, we get into our routines. And even if you thrive on routine, you, you get kind of off track. It's just, it's drift. That's what happens. Um, but when you know every three months you're going to have this opportunity to just say, okay, I'm starting fresh now. You get that, the new year energy that we have right now, you get it again and again all year long. And that's what I love about Refresh is because you don't have to just feel that in January. You can feel it in April and July and October as well. Carrie says, I'm having visions of paper clipping roundtable style, and I am so, so excited. She's talking about the podcast. There will certainly be a little bit of that. We're definitely going to have some multi-person conversations going on because um, I love getting those different viewpoints on sharing in different topics. And I've, I've loved doing those episodes that we did for the membership on a whole variety of topics. All right, what else does anybody have to say? You guys are also very polite. Amy's trying a 9 by 12 album this year. I've done that in the past. That is such a fun size. I loved doing layouts of that size. Um, Nikki says that she loves doing 6 by 8 December daily pages. It felt less stressful than doing 12 by 12. And similarly for me, she feels limited by pocket pages. Laura has trouble accepting that permission to play. I, I know you are not alone out there, Laura. It's, it's, it's hard for a lot of us because we're, we're taught that we need to be, we need to do the adulting thing. We need to be serious and take care of our lives. So how can we decompress and relax enough to get to that point where we can play? Because it sounds so like, I don't, I don't have time to play. I have to do all those things. So I totally get that. But you can get there, and the more you give yourself permission to do it, the easier it is, and I would say the less serious you take everything, the more you can take that more playful approach to life, which we probably all could use a little bit more of. All right. Any more questions for tonight? Well, I so appreciate all of you being here with me. Um, this was so fun. Can you give details on the membership? Yes, of course. So uh, simplescrapper.com slash membership is where you can see, read and see all about it. Um, we last year moved to this brand new platform and it is so amazing. What it is, is that our community exists on its own website as well uh, as on an app. And I will bring that app here up on my phone. So it works on Apple and Android. And so when I log in, this is what I see here. I see, um, and I can't show this very well, but I see, you know, there's this scrolling thing here of featured posts. Oh, I can't, there we go. You can scroll featured posts. So those are the ones that myself and my team get to select to highlight for you guys. And then you scroll and you have a feed of all the posts. But then there's also topics and subgroups for certain conversations and then there's the classroom areas and it's all this app has really made the difference for being able to provide mobile anytime access and one of the best things is that you can take the picture of your layout let's just pretend it's a layout with your phone and then upload it directly to the community um and sure, you could have done that when you were on Facebook, but then you don't know if you were accidentally going to share that photo with Crazy Aunt Mildred. So this is a completely kind of self-contained ecosystem that is just for Simple Scrapper members. It is just for our paid members. So it is safe and secure, and you know that you're going to be sharing your photo with just scrapbookers like you. And so every month we release a PDF magazine called Spark. Um, we've been doing that. <laughs> Gosh, I think it was issue 61 that we just released there. They tend to be 60 to 70 pages, I think. Um, and that features an exclusive article, layouts from our creative team, um, three to five sketches, uh, storytelling prompts. Uh, and that's every single month that we do that. And then, of course, these seasonal retreats. Uh, we have monthly crops. 
uh, I host crops during the non-refresh months. Of course, I host two crops during refresh months and then monthly crops and the other ones. But then our members host a ton of their own crops. Um, we kind of have a standing Friday night one and then they're starting a new uh, Saturday morning one. Um, all right, guys, you guys tell me what else I'm missing, what I'm forgetting out here. The community is just so amazing because we do a lot to guide the conversation, but then there's just questions posted all the time. There's a show and share area where you can just share your layouts and get genuine feedback on, you know, what you're doing. You can ask questions of, you know, this isn't, this isn't coming together. What can I do? Or I'm having trouble finishing this project. And people can give you advice, or you can even have a class called The Finishing Project that helps guide you through finishing one of those albums. Um, yeah, I'm super proud of the membership, and I hope you will check it out. We do have a deal going on right now where you can try your first month for $10 and then pick which plan you want to go from there, whether you want to go for a monthly, quarterly, or annual plan. So super worth it to try it for $10. And, of course, um, I really feel like this new platform has changed the game because everything is all into one, all in one place. Oh, Wendy just mentioned something important here. We have, ooh, I apologize, I have to lean down here for a second. So what we did is, as part of our move, um, we have, I think we're on sketch number 447, somewhere in there. And we couldn't move them all as individual records. And so what I did is for the first 200 sketches, I created a sketchbook. And right now it's available as a PDF. But what we're also doing, which will be available in February-ish, is we're create, we've created a sketchbook. And you guys, this thing is, first of all, it's a beast. And this is just volume one. <laughs> It's beautiful. It is the first 200 sketches organized by number of photos with one example per sketch. And the final version will be spiral bound for convenience. And it's going to, we don't know for sure yet. It's going to be probably the eight and a half by 11 size or in between here. So maybe more like a seven by nine. Um, these were just some prototypes that I had created. But this type of thing is only available for members. So the PDF sketchbook you can download now. If you want the full sketchbook, you still have to be a member um, to order that, at least at this point. Um, yeah, so super excited about that. That's something coming down the pike. We'll also have sketchbook volume two, which is roughly numbers 205 through 400 and something coming out later this year as well. Um, yeah. Thanks for all the prompts from my members here. I'm sure I forgot lots of things. There's always, there's just a, always a lot going on, but it's not, and I hope, I think everyone would agree, it's not overwhelming. It's, it's a way you can, we have really specific things. We've got the new stuff at the beginning of the month. We've got kind of one big thing every month. Um, we're doing new pop-up workshops. Um, we're also going to do some theme weeks, mostly focused around either photo or supply organization. And in between, it's all just kind of dip in and dip out at your convenience. When you have a question, when you want that camaraderie, when you want to share or ask a question or just cheer someone else on and feel a part of that community, um, that's there for you 24-7. So <laughs> that's my long spiel on membership. Thank you, guys. Um, and yeah. Of course, oh, Amy just mentioned book club. One more thing we are changing this year. A um, couple new things with book club. We're reading one nonfiction book a month. Um, we've been doing that. This is our fourth year of book club. This year, I'm starting to release the discussion guides free to all, everyone, all of the internet on the beginning of each month. But then our discussions will be inside of the membership. And part of doing that is because it was 99% members participating anyway, and that means we can have our chat at the same place we have all of our other chats. So it was a, a convenience thing, um, clarity thing. Um, but 
I also think that we are also adding value just to the world at large by going ahead and publishing those discussion guides at the beginning of the month. Um, so you can participate in the book club even if you're not a member. All right, Laura just said, totally manageable amount of content and events, one of the things that I love about this membership. So thank you. All right, guys. I know we're a tiny bit delayed here, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If I didn't get to your question or I missed it somewhere, please do leave a comment on this video. And especially if you're watching in the replay and you have a question I didn't answer, I would love if you left a comment and I will do my best to get an answer for you um, because I would love for you to be a part of our community. And even if all you do is take away these three strategies, I hope they help you find a little bit more um, clarity and contentment and of course, simplicity in your year. Because I think when you take our brand of simplicity and simplify your 2019, you're gonna feel more satisfied overall in life. And you're certainly gonna feel more satisfied with your scrapbooking hobby. You're gonna feel more productive and accomplished. And I guarantee you more that sense of camaraderie because our community is just so amazing. Even if all you do is participate in live events like this. So again, my name is Jennifer Wilson. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and the energy that you come bring to our community. And I will see you guys again soon.